Hey, welcome back to the Infamous Podcast. This is Brian. This is Daryl without his headphones. And <laughs> he's going to cry about that the entire episode. I mean, he's got that like soul solitary, like Italian guy tear. Um, Cause that guy, the Indian, remember from the trash commercial was really an Italian guy who lied about being an American Indian. He was like Rachel Dolezal. <laughs> if you don't know who she is, look her up. That's actually anyway, a pretty fun fact. Uh, fun fact. Uh, one, I'm going to apologize for the sound because we are in the under construction Nerd Den Studio 2.0 and it's mostly concrete <laughs> and windows. So windows that there, don't open, right? I know. Anyway. Um, but yeah. All right. So we've been gone for three weeks. Um, this is our first podcast in March. So if you're listening to this, hopefully you survive St. Patty's Day. Or as my, my very Irish grandmother used to say, fuck on Americans and St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> it's a racist holiday, Brian. It's a racist holiday. Um, don't be like the Americans, Brian. That's what she, I mean. Like, And then she'd flick a cigarette at me. Anyway, uh, go make me a Manhattan. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I have moved from the original nerd den studio into a new apartment because I've had an upheaval in my life. So we appreciate the patience. I specifically appreciate Daryl's patience with me because I've canceled two weeks in a row, kind of last minute ish. Like, Hey, I can't record. <laughs> so to be fair, I did not have my computer set up until yesterday. Yeah. So there yeah. is that. And that's, that's, you know, just a small, just that's, that's a that's minor actually, thing. Yeah, so, so anyway, uh, I mean, I guess we could have gone over there and been like, get out, we're recording. So <laughs> Awkward. Weird. It was still my house at that time. So it's like, <laughs> technically, you, you know. Leave. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, no, things are good. We're back on track. We're going to we're gonna nail down the sound in this studio like we did in the other studio. I'm going to get a rug, put some baffling on the wall. It's going to be awesome. Um, but. That being said, I figured this was the right time to pop Daryl's cherry with a random cast because we haven't done a random cast since Daryl took over. Um, I looked back, it was like 2019 was the last one. Well, so we did something. It w actually wasn't the full podcast, but when we had those those cards, and when you said that, right. that's what I thought you meant. Oh, I mean, first. I should get the cards if you want to do the cards. No, that's fine. What so, you were saying, I mean, they're right, right there. Yeah, but. <laughs> He's pointing to the, uh, to the closet. closet so. Um, but no, so the idea of the random cast is literally we just talk about things and you came in with a whole thing of notes and I'm just going to talk off the cuff because I've only turned my TV on four times since I've been here and all four of those times have been to watch AEW wrestling. <laughs> Which is on tonight, by the way. It's, it's on, right? Mm -hmm. and right? I think Rampage. Next week it's uh, early or something. So okay, it's know. next week then. Yeah, okay. Oh no, it'll be late. It's at 11:30 tonight. That's after, what it is. I knew there was something after the NCAA basketball games. Oh, and if you're a Kentucky fan out there, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the best money team can buy loses to a 15 seed. <laughs> Three lottery picks. Think about that. Three. Three lottery picks. And they lost to the 15 seed. I love it. Yeah, that was. That wasn't good. Let's go dancing. Giggity, <laughs> giggity goo. Anyway. I wonder if Duke's going to pull pull one through. I don't know, man. I I, I think uh, I think the refs are going to give Duke a whole bunch of uh, help since it's Kuzutsky's last year. I mean, Duke is Duke. They're on TV more than Leave it to Beaver reruns. <laughs> <laughs> Was P. that Dickie Vitale? Did that's Pete Gillen. Pete Gillen, that's right. Uh, oh, God, Pete Gillen. <laughs> He was a Xavier basketball coach who looked like a, an angry leprechaun. And Daryl almost spit his sparkling water out of his nose. That was, that was a close one right there. <laughs> don't, spit, don't spit sparkling water on my computer. <laughs> this is actually pretty good. Too, I about just that. got her back. So, Oh, the Spindrift? Yeah. Yeah, Spindrift Pineapple, it's where it is. Like, other than Hint, that's like the way to go. Okay. There's like nothing in it either. Which is great. Four carbs. Yeah. I'm extra surprised it's that many. I need carbs, so I don't so, eat enough. Yeah. I I kind of do too. Oh, yeah. Let's, uh, like, so just random catching, catching people up on Brian's life. Brian yeah. has abs now. <laughs> Brian has the bicep split. <laughs> and Brian was 216 pounds. 
Nice. So, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, but life is good. We are back. Um, so we're just going to hop right in and we're going to talk about Superman and Lois, I think. Yeah. You want to just kick off with Let's that? Let's just start with that. So go ahead. So this, well, actually there was no Superman and Lois this week, but we did, since we haven't been here all March, mm -hmm. we did miss right. talking about two episodes. Yeah. Uh, the first episode, I, be, I believe, was the first week of March, and that was Tried and True. Uh, the second episode was the last week, and or last week, not this week, and that was Antihero. So, funny enough, you know, we always talk about where with Soups and Lolo, even when it's not up to standards, it's still pretty damn good. I think last week's episode was the first episode I just didn't really like but before we go into that you know let's talk a little bit about episode i believe it was episode six tried and true mm -hmm. and that is kind of like that we get the fallout from the quinceanera after lana finds out that kyle cheated right we get uh this is we the, this the episode i love the start of the episode with the music and we get a a quick summary or a quick bizarro origin story if you will yeah that was kind of interesting with uh ally and and all of that going on and the little phantom zone necklace and yeah i'm assuming it's a phantom zone necklace That's of course what it, i assumed it was doomsday so i've been wrong yeah. a lot this season. And, again that was my first thought when i saw the necklace as well and the way everything and the way it was pulling clark in but now i don't know I, yeah I, I really don't know uh, what else did we have last or that episode? We also had, um, we had Jordan going full drug addict, Jonathan or Jonathan. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. He's with the X XK and got his starting job because yep. I mean the, the guy before him, Timmy, I believe Timmy. <laughs> he was taking it too. somebody right. called the cops on him. Right. Wonder who that is. Timmy. <laughs> Uh, you know, it, it's so just kind of the random castness of this all, mm -hmm. like it raises the interesting question, right? If you're like a high school kid and you're, you know, you run the 40 and like four, three and you hit, you know, 16, 17 home runs, you're say a shortstop or whatever. Mm -hmm. But there's a guy at a school across town who's hitting, you know, 22 home runs. He runs a four one and you know, just he's cycling through mm -hmm. how as a parent, do you tell your kid don't, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's an interesting conundrum. It's like, do you tell your kid, Hey, you do what you have to do to get that scholarship or get noticed by the pros. Or do you say, sorry, hard work isn't enough. Yeah. So, this is where I would say, because it, again, especially for a kid, honestly, because you don't know the repercussions of what you're doing as far as, and, and again, it might not be, especially with the XK. Oh, whoa. There we go. Hello. <laughs> I hit the, I hit the button on the standing desk. Well, wasn't I quite right expected. It. No, neither was. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> All right. Not be able to lean against the wall there. You can't lock that. Uh, no, but oh, okay. It, I just kept hitting it with my, with my hip. <laughs> so it, it, this is where, this is where I come out on this. Uh, cause that's a great point. You're doing all the work, but, and, and again, this, this happened during the steroid era in baseball back in the nineties where guys were looking at other guys and saying, okay, I know this guy's on gear. Yeah. He's, he got, he just got a $50 million yeah. bump in pay. Look at Andy Pettit, right? Andy Pettit Good. is the perfect example of this. Yes. Um, and Barry Bonds. But I'm going to talk about Andy Pettit first. Andy Pettit was a perfectly serviceable starting pitcher. You knew what you were getting from him. Mm -hmm. You were getting six to seven innings. You were getting seven to nine strikeouts. And you were going to get an ERA under two. Yeah. Right? He right. was an all-star. In the conversation for the Cy Young, but never really like a Cy Young guy. And then he starts cycling and all of a sudden he's an ERA around one six and you know, he's, th he's throwing over a hundred miles for the first time in his career. And you know, 
there's that. And then you look at Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds was a Hall of Famer before he ever mm-hmm. did a drop of steroids. Yeah. And uh, he won, I think, seven gold gloves. Right. I mean, fantastic player. Like, yeah. fantastic player. And then he watches Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa get roided out of their gourds <laughs> and go on this dinger run of hitting, you know, what was it, 73 home runs? Well, he hit 73. Well, he hit 73. But, but they, oh, they it both was like hit 68 60. or whatever. They both yeah. hit over 60. Yeah. And uh, nobody had done over that. Over 61 because yeah, that was. Because uh, Maris had yeah, 61. 61. And nobody had ever done that before. And then he was like, oh, here, just give me the shots. And, you know, and, and it, it took what was it, a perfect swing and added a ton of power to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, was Barry Bonds wrong to do that? Yeah, uh, and, I mean and, that's yeah. the question, right? So, and the, he was under the, these people all did this under the care of like see, actual and, doctors. And this is what I, that's what I was going to say. Uh, well, not the doctor part, but you're absolutely he was absolutely wrong in the I would say the moral sense, but from a sense of baseball, mm-hmm. baseball it ultimately should be to blame for this. It wasn't illegal because one, it wasn't illegal, and they encouraged it. Yeah, they encouraged it. Because they knew what was going on. Okay, so, so to set the stage, there was a strike in 1994. Mm-hmm. Nobody was coming back to watch baseball. Hockey was doing better than baseball. America's pastime. Hockey was beating it in, in the ratings. Um, I think like Raw was like crushing it by like a million. Like if you took all the baseball games together on like Monday night, like Raw was killing it. And so then they're like, "All right, guys, just do what you got to do." And then they <coughs> demonized every last one of yeah. them who were not named Tom Glavin and Greg Maddox. Yep. And, and on this, and this is what I would say to somebody like Jonathan, because one, and this is the problem with him. I would have thought that a team like Metropolis, yeah, where they have this big population versus Smallville would have a better football team. Well, they did have a good football team. And that was the thing. So he was, he was that good. And and again, he is coming back from two injuries right. to his hands. Well, so now this. Now. But but when he showed up in Smallville, mm-hmm. and the coach didn't even give him a shot, that yeah. coach should have been fired immediately. Yeah. And and again, that's let's not not deny that stuff like that does happen. Mm-hmm. Like that absolutely does happen. So uh, when people say you know the best, generally speaking, coaches want the best players to play. Oh yeah. Better chance of win. But there are. Again, I've seen it where it's like, why is this guy playing? He absolutely cannot do X, Y, or Z. And it's because yeah. sometimes coaches are, you know, again, you have blinders on. Like, it's not necessarily, not all the time that you're being prejudiced against somebody that's new, but sometimes you're like, you're in this, you've had this guy for X mm-hmm. amount of years and you want to see him succeed and you can't see the fact that dude's not cutting it. With Jonathan, I would tell him the, the problem is when, if you make that concession, you're probably more apt to make more concessions in your life when a situation like not necessarily like this occurs, but that a similar situation where you're doing the right thing. Somebody else is not. And then what happens when you're the one that gets caught? You can't say, well, this guy was doing it. That's just not going to fall, especially if it's something illegal. This is, I don't know about the whole the XK. XK is a yeah. gray area. Because yeah, that's it's a like, really gray is area. It a drug? What is it? It's a it's a alien mineral. Yeah. So I mean, so. hell, yeah. You know, like you said, it's like taking a little multivitamin or something. But I'm more curious to see with Jonathan if the fact that he is part Kryptonian, if the XK is going to have lasting effects as like, far as superpower wise. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, because he had a mastery of his powers right away, which was interesting, right? Yeah. And kind of cool. Um, but at, at the same time, right? Like, what if he gets, what if he turns into, like, a bizarro version? <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, because Superman was married, well, bizarro Superman was married to someone else, mm-hmm. and Lana killed her. So. Yeah. So, that I, I think that's. That is one of the things I really am curious to see because, you know, this next episode, Antihero, one of the things is that Jonicket then gets fingered for the drugs because his awesome girlfriend, Candace, who's an absolute low life, like, hey, I can't get caught with this, so yeah. why don't you take the fall with me? Right. They won't even check you. And then yeah. what Jonathan does, he never, again, he's like, he doesn't rat on her, no. not even to his pan or nope. parents. And 
that is gonna i'm really curious to see the lasting repercussions in their relationship yeah. like the whole family dynamic because you know jordan kept it quiet too and you know lois was pissed yeah at him. but then jordan ratted jonathan out yeah so um I, I i did find it funny that clark got a little sanctimonious and it's like dude you you, you walk through life on easy mode <laughs> that, again but he's right though i'm not saying he's not right yeah. but it was it's, also a little sanctimonious yeah. there and it's it's it, it was it was to the, it was to that especially in that conversation in the last episode which where he he talks about you know, we're going to have a conversation of about stuff I thought you already knew. Mm -hmm. That was that I'm not angry. I'm, I'm disappointed. disappointed. <laughs> um, to to note, um, Tried and True was directed by Amy Jo Johnson. That's what, yeah. And? And then Antihero, Antihero was Elizabeth Hinstridge, yeah. which we had talked about before. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know. I, I liked both of these episodes for different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, I did not like the... CWization of the of um of antihero, yeah, that's with uh General Anderson yeah. and his you mean Hayward inevitability. <laughs> so yeah, and again, it, there was a couple CW moments with this. You know, one of the things we talked about was you know the girl that Sarah kissed. When were we going to see her? I told you she was coming back soon. Yeah, like and you did. Yeah, and again, she just happened to be black. Which whatever, that's. I mean, blacks and Latinas getting together, that's all right. But I will I mean, say... Blacks and white people getting together, again, that's it, all right, too. I will say this. If they keep it like they did, because I did like the conversation she had mm -hmm. with Sarah, because I think her name was Aubrey. She had she was someone who is a child of divorce, and Sarah was in that situation where, you know, I don't want to talk to my dad. And, and she did have some great advice for her and it seemed like yeah. they were just friends right sure. now. And that was, if it goes from there, if, if that's all they do with that, even if she comes back as a friend and no, yeah. you know, undertones of her cheating on, you know, Jordan with her. Right. I'm fine. I'm a hundred percent fine and, with it. Like it can't be where she comes back and like, she makes Jordan break bad. Right. Right. Because she's, you know, like, oh yeah, I kissed your girl. Yeah. She, I kissed your girl and she liked it. <laughs> Okay, Katy Perry. Right. <laughs> if anything, I think the way he's fe the, as alone as he's feeling, I think Jonathan would be more in tune to break bad. Well, I, I, I've, I've, at and different I think occasions you've, said yeah. they, uh, how the story can go with if each one of them, like, or either one of them break bad. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think. What would be? I wonder where Wole Park is. Like, what is he shooting? He's going to be back next episode. I know, but what was he shooting that? Oh, like, I don't he know. had to disappear, right? Right. Um, <laughs> whatever it is, I want to watch it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, I think if like Jordan breaks bad, and then John Henry comes back, and he's like, "Not nah, kid, come on, mm -hmm. you come work with me. You work with me and that, and we'll 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 set you straight." And then it would add like a nice little tension between him and Clark, mm -hmm. which I think would be really, really welcome in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So the other, the thing I really didn't, well, I haven't liked this season at all is Lieutenant Anderson. He is a caricature just like general, general? Hayward. No, he's, I thought he was a lieutenant. Oh, I don't know. but uh, Just like Hayward was in WandaVision, if you all will recall, even though that was many moons ago, our, we had big issues with Yeah, we didn't Hayward. like Hayward. He was a mustache-twirling, one-dimensional yeah. villain. And you're right. I think, though, they introduced Anderson as this super weak character to mm -hmm. begin with. Yes. And he wasn't nearly formidable enough to deal with Superman and then the way he wanted to deal with Superman was to control him because, again, he was a weak-minded hobgoblin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the fact that he, after, and again, I'm assuming, because we didn't see it, I'm just going to assume he's never taken X kryptonite. And I know he just, like, was, you know, high to the gills with oh, it. Yeah, he, he, like he knows how 47,000 yeah. uh, inhalers there. Yeah, he knows how to fight, with, right. use his powers. I think one of one of my favorite things about Ooh, hold on, he knows how to fight though. Well, That's I know he knows how to fight. The difference between him and Clark, but he knows how to use his powers. That and again, I, what I, what I was going to bring up, man, well, he's Steel. a Gary Steel. Yeah, 
I was going to bring up Man of Steel, where I actually liked how Zod, and again, Zod was bred for combat, so oh, yeah. he, he was able to master them. But when he first got some of his powers, he didn't know what to do with it. The heat vision. In yeah, particular. I love that scene. The so I'm I'm a big fan of the way Man of Steel handled the heat vision, mm -hmm. and it's been since since added into the Superman lore that it hurts mm -hmm. to use because like with Christopher Reeves and and um, Brandon Routh, they use the heat vision and nothing, right? But with Man of Steel, he uses it, and it's like he has to like when he like that, yeah, that blink like is that, it. yeah, blink it away, and they've carried that over with Tyler Hoechlin as well. Yeah, um, I really like that really idea, um, and. You know, I mean, Smallville obviously didn't do that, but his heat vision was also blue. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's, I feel like they're doing a really good job with an Elseworld Superman, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is not like earth prime, right? Earth one or even earth three. <laughs> this is a, this is a Superman that we've never seen before. Excuse me. Um, with the geek dad thing and everything, but yeah, one of our favorite parts. Yeah. I mean, it's a great trope, but at, at the end of the day, like his Superman is probably as underpowered of a Superman as we'd ever seen. Mm. So, cause even like when he's on the kryptonite, like when he got hit with kryptonite and he got taken down by the soldiers, which was a great mirror. That's what I love that with bizarro. That's one of my, that's yeah. probably maybe my favorite part of that episode is how they did that mirroring of, mm that fight scene and they revert. If you're watching it, they, they did every, like everything was the same. It just, except right, reverse. In reverse. Yeah. Which was great. It was like watching tenant <laughs> except for fun. <laughs> I'm going to have to watch that again. No, you're not. I say that and I probably won't. So it's too long, but um, the, the, the thing that I think, and again, they should have, like goodwill built up after a season and a half of what the good stuff they've done. I still think it was a mistake that they killed Bizarro this early. Is he dead? Do we yeah, know? that's true. I did like the relationship building they did between Clark and Tauro in this episode. Uh, Tauro is an amazing addition to this. Yes. Like the, the idea of an older brother. Um, I liked when he was like, and what about me? Were we the closest of friends? No, I killed you. <laughs> um, no i mean Tauro is great i loved him when he's like apologize to my nephew and he's like you do it for yourself one day i like that so, i really liked because uh, um again that was if you think about a few weeks before that clark was like you, is, when he asked clark is it do you can you think i can change and then clark said no no you're irredeemable but then he said but i hope i'm wrong or right. something along those lines oh. and that that kind of like I, I just, I love how hopeful this version of Superman is. Yes. Like, especially because, like, your beloved Snyderverse, mm. Superman, I, is, again. is so dark and, and so Batman-y. Yeah. I, again, I love Henry Cavill as Superman, and I love what Zack Snyder was trying to do. I still, and I when people say this, that's one of the things that I will absolutely say I 100% get, is that he is too dark of a character. Mm -hmm. So... But this one, I, I do. I love the hopefulness of Clark, of well, of Superman, yeah. of Superman and Lois, as well as loving the, you know, the husband and the father side of him as well. Yeah, seeing him deal with the boys is great, um, and the boys together too. I mean, the the we haven't had tension like this since um, Jordan was developing the super hearing, mm -hmm. which was really a great like scene when Jonathan stormed out of the room and slammed the door you know, to, yeah. to send him into a, a tizzy. Um, but it was the opposite this time. Like Jordan, like kind of <laughs> lobbed the grenade on his way out. So, yeah. so I, I mean, I am really, and again, like I said, it'll come, it'll be back the 22nd. I believe that's next Tuesday. Um, only a week gone yeah. down, which is good. Mm -hmm. But I'm really curious to see how they handle this because again, the last thing we see is Anderson going to Alley Alley with the pendant. And you know, that was what Bozaro said. It's funny. We never get his name, his true name, but uh, it's whatever Clark Kent is backwards. That's what I was going to say. Whatever that is backwards, but to connect <laughs> Carlick. <laughs> 
So I, I again, and like I said, I did, I just happened to see the not the summary, but kind of like the mm-hmm. blurb, but that John Henry is back next yeah. week. Cool. So that is great because we've missed him. Absolutely. I mean, Wally Park is awesome, and hopefully Natalie's back because I want more of that tension between her and Clark. Yeah. So I again, like I said. With this whole thing with Jonathan and Jordan. Uh, and again, Lana, these last two episodes, Lana had some good material as well. Yeah, she's going through that divorce. Mm-hmm. or Because she had to decide, do I want to stay with Kyle or right. not? Do we want to build this up? And you know, after she you know talks to the, the late, she talks to Lois about something totally different when Lois comes to her. Uh, because Lois is trying to, there was an ep- a scene with, you know, part of the B or C plot, you want to say, yeah. and that... Uh, what is it? The tried and true episode was Lucy was there. Yep. And they were actually getting along. Lucy was really a hit, with, really a hit with the boys. And then it gets on to the alley thing again. And that's where they, they just, they just can't come to any type of accord with that. So right. we're going to see her again down the road. Uh, what, what's going to happen with this whole Anderson and Ashley or our alley, alley thing. Yeah. And like you said, is bizarre really dead. I mean, I would hope not, uh, because I think you can do again. If they killed him this season, I don't. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying I think they could have used him for a little bit more. But uh, they, I, I do think that was a mistake. But at the same time, they've done such a good job overall of surpassing our expectations. Right. That I should be able to say, okay, I don't like it, but I'll, I'll wait and see. I'm willing to give them the grace that they need to tell the story. Because right. they, they've proven that they can tell good stories. And again, um, it was Max Kronick and Patrick Burton Leahy who wrote Tried and True. And Max Cunningham and Michael Narducci, who wrote a bunch of the season one episodes, um, as the two teams. Um, interesting enough, first teams that were both men. So I, I thought that was kind of interesting. Michael and Narducci, then, the guy that used to be an actor. I don't know. Or is he? No, I think there's another Narducci that I think I think I've seen that guy's name before. Oh wait, no, Michael Mar- Narducci must have done something else. But anyway, um, but uh, the next two teams are uh, it's Suds Sutherland and Ian. Somali uh, as the directors of Into Oblivion and Thirty Days of Thirty Days and Thirty Nights, and then Juliana James and Christy Krozek and Katie Aldrin and Jai Jameson, and um, you know I think uh, well Jai Jameson wrote an episode, so they actually all all of them have written episodes so far. Michael Dart Narducci was the co-writer for um, the Ties That Bind, the second episode, which was really good. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's just one of those things where I like this like team of head writers that they're doing, um, and it's working. It's I absolutely think, working. I think they have a really interesting writers room. Um, I think it's a it's a meritocracy that we're seeing because the the you know uh, Juliana Jane, all, all four of these writers for the next episode have um, the next two episodes have multiple things under their belt. The same with antihero. And, um, you know, so it's just cool. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see where this goes. I'm excited about the show, even though like we got some CW esque drama, Mm -hmm. which we've been hoping to avoid. It wasn't so bad. Yeah. And I, I'm not going to say you overreacted to your feelings for it because it's art and it's subjective, Mm -hmm. but I don't think it's as bad as your yeah. Well, so. this is the thing. Uh, it was, it was. When I say bad, I mean bad in relation to Superman and Lois. If it was another right. show, right, then that's different. But again, I it's what my expectations are for this show. And it when I say bad, uh, there were still good moments in it. There were still things right. I really liked in it. It was just more the decisions. And because Anderson had more screen time, that absolutely, that probably absolutely colored my opinion of it a little bit more mm-hmm. than if he had a little bit less screen time. Yeah. So I, I think if you want to look at these two episodes, like just the closest comparison of a show is Friday night lights, right? Mm-hmm. These are the, the JD, uh, I forget the the freshman QBs season where it got like 
you know, he was he was just a douche. Yeah, and so, again, every show has its yeah, it has its down every points. show. I mean, and again, I this was probably my least favorite episode of the whole series. But like I said, if this was another if this was another show, and I was re- relating it to everything else on that show, I probably wouldn't be as hard on it right. as I am. Right. So, oh yeah. So you're not you're not upset. You're just disappointed. <laughs> Um, and again, like you said, they have gotten the the way they have done this show. They should get more. I should give them a little bit more grace because I might look back and say, OK, I see why they did this. So that's I'm keeping that in reserve when I'm thinking about this. But, you know, for the first two viewings and the second viewing, it wasn't as bad. I'll, I'll admit that. But it still did not get me like smiling like I usually do. Yeah. No, so, I hear you. Um, all right. So. Other randomness. I told you I've been watching AEW, right? Because mm-hmm. I love AEW. Uh, I was really excited that Thunder Rosa won the belt. Like, Britt had gotten super stale mm-hmm. as the champ, and having Thunder Rosa win it in her adoptive home city of San Antonio, I thought it was really great. Plus, I thought it was a great match. I thought it was. Like, it's a steel cage match. You don't see that with the women a lot. It's a hardcore match. The last time we saw the two of them like really wrestle was the lights out match from two years ago. So mm-hmm. this was like a slow burn of storytelling that used to be the um, the way in wrestling, and and then you know WWE kind of killed that with with no long term booking. Um, I will say I was really interested to see that they had Jack Perry Jungle Boy mm-hmm. take the pin in the trios match against Red Dragon. Because I think if anyone should have taken the pin, it was probably Luchasaurus. Mm-hmm. Because Jack had been on such a run, or Jungle Boy, sorry, had been on such a run. Um, but that was a really good match, too. And that was freaking really good. O'Reilly and Bobby Fish are great. But the thing that I'm most invested in right now is the return of William Regal, or well, the showing up of William Regal, and Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson, <laughs> and John Moxley. As an effortless tag team. That was, they looked good. Effortless. And like the whole thing with Yuta and when Yuta was no selling the kicks, Wheeler Yuta, like it was, I mean, this, this is why I love AEW because of the storytelling that we yeah. get and you know, the, the, the violence, but like, so that was my favorite wrestling thing. My favorite non, so my favorite non wrestling thing about AEW right now is Chris Jericho has abs again. Which I'm Dude, super, he is, yeah. he's so jacked. I'm super sta- I'm super yeah. stoked. But um, I have a friend who's a professional wrestler and he told me how he went from mm-hmm. puffy to not puffy so quick. Um, but I'm not going to talk about it because it's dangerous. Um, I'll tell you later. But yeah, you told me. Oh, we I were told talking you about, yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, but the Jericho Appreciation Society. That is great. With the we're not pro wrestlers, we're with sports, sports entertainers. Inter- Oh my god, I, I I popped my tits off for that. Dude, when he like, said that, yeah, I hollered. That would because he talking about a master like with the with on the mic, because the crowd was with him, and when he yeah. said that, oh instant heel turn. Yes. And then Daniel Garcia, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm a sports entertainer <laughs> too. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I'm a bit I, I I'm like high on Daniel Garcia. The 2.0 dudes, mm-hmm. I think they're trash. Uh, I didn't like them as ever moist or whatever they were called in NXT. Oh. Um, it was like, ever, it was ever rise, but I always called them ever moist. Um, that was the, the Ruby Rose band from pitch perfect three. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. And then like, I just want them to do something with Jake Hager. Yeah. I was just thinking a couple of weeks ago before he came before the whole turn was yeah. like the week before week ago, I was thinking like, where in the hell has he been? I haven't seen it. Why? Did he have a Bellator fight or something? Cause I know he's still under contract with them. So, I don't know. Cause he's undefeated there still. Yeah. So I love the, uh, like just that promo, like that, that whole thing with Jericho was great. Yeah. Like I wasn't as high on, on the Thunder Rosa, Britt Baker, Matt, or not. Uh, no, let me backtrack. I wasn't as high on the storytelling of the just the women's matches mm-hmm. in general, but I liked how they, like you said, I didn't know because this was before I was watching. Yeah, like you, you were talking about their history and the fact that she does she does get the belt yeah. in her. I think that that is great. That yeah. that's how you book things. 
I think that's how you book things to pay off a story. Yes. Like you don't I mean. always have the, the hometown wrestler no, win. No. Whereas WWE goes the other way where nobody wins in their hometown. Mm-hmm. It's so rare. It's like ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I really am, am super invested in AEW right now. And how about what, uh, happened to poor Wardlow? Yeah. <laughs> you know, okay. So I'm not, I, I don't, I wasn't an SCU fan before they were in AEW, mm-hmm. and I'm not a I'm not a fan of any of the three of them, um, Kazarian or Christopher Daniel or Scorpio Sky. Mm-hmm. So I was not happy when Scorpio Sky beat my boy for the belt. <laughs> um, and uh, so yeah, I just I I'm, I'm not a huge Scorpio Sky fan. So I was kind of hoping Wardlow was going to take it off of him. Yeah. Um, because Dan Lambert had that other belt, and I think it would have been interesting for Dan Le- Dan Lambert not to give him the interim belt and keep it and be like, well, you know, uh, yeah, I, we I, won two belts and you only fought for one of them. Like yeah. it would have been a great like twist. I will say I'm glad they didn't. Uh, you know, I don't have any issues with Scorpio Sky. I, I haven't watched him enough to form a real opinion of him. Even though I, I say he's good in the ring, but like the whole Dan Lambert thing can be. There we go. I didn't again. <laughs> I, I understand that Scorpio Sky is a good wrestler. Yeah, like that's. that's but no, your issue, what but, I'm saying is yeah. your issues with him. I don't right. like. I haven't don't been have around. Right. Right. I don't have yeah. that. But I, I would have. Th- the thing is, I was going to say, I, I think that even though they're how they're building Wardlow, I think that would have been a mistake to have Scorpio Sky win it one week and drop it the next. Well, they shouldn't have have had him go up against Wardlow. Well, that you're, so. that's exactly right. Because when I saw that they were wrestling, that that was my question. I'm saying. But they did a good job of keeping Wardlow's momentum and not having him, you know, drop the, you know, drop it, uh, you know, legit drop the match and have, and it made yeah. sense for what they're, you know, it looks like they're, you know, with uh, Sting and uh, Darby Allen coming in for the, for the rescue. But go, what, what I meant to say is the whole jungle boy, I was actually, I was very surprised that, that he took the fall. Yeah. I was, it, I was very just, surprised. He's been about so that. hot lately and, yeah. you know, being one of the pillars and, I don't know. It's uh, it was interesting. It was interesting, but like you know, I kind of trust them. And then the whole thing with Ring of Honor with um, mm-hmm. Tony Khan buying Ring of Honor that yeah. happened while while we were away. Uh, it opens up a whole world of possibilities. Um, I know you mentioned something about possibly because it, because is There's Cody Rhodes and still in limbo or as far as what he's going to do, if that'll work, I, what I think it's a work, but that's just me. I'm mm-hmm. I'm skeptical. I don't I don't like you know. Anyway, um, a guy like Cody, he's a carny, just like Chris. Um, <laughs> and I love Cody. I love, I'm all in on Cody Rhodes. So, um, but I don't know. I mean, like if Cody were to, to be put in charge of a, uh, of, of our, uh, ring of honor, ROH, that'd be really interesting. Uh, at the same time, like they're saying he's showing up at, in WWE and he's got a match against Seth Rollins at, at WrestleMania. Um, I hate that they would even announce that. You know, it's like, just show up and get that pop. Yeah. You know, it's, I don't know. Um, I don't want him to go back to WWE because he'll end up just being Stardust again at some point and it'll hurt my soul a little bit. <laughs> like what little I have left will be, will be bruised <laughs> just even, even more and calloused and I just won't be able to love anything. Um, <laughs> but that being said, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm excited. I, so I'm so excited because Keith Lee popped up, which was great because I love Keith Lee. Cause he's so limitless and uh, I'm excited for Kenny Omega to come back. You know what? Like I forgot what happened Wednesday, but somebody said something and it reminded me of Kenny Omega. And I was like, I miss Kenny Omega. <laughs> I miss Kenny Omega every week. Yeah. Cause one battle cry is a fucking amazing, amazing entrance song. So almost yeah. like that in kingdom Cody's. Mm-hmm. Like from Down Straight, or like Nick, Cody's from Down Straight. I don't remember who did Battle Cry, but those are like if you want to get pumped up at the gym, yeah, listen to Battle Cry and then listen to Kingdom. And like you're gonna be like banging your head in a locker, <laughs> headbutting your friends as you're walking out to lift. It's yeah. <laughs> so, what else has been going on? You said you haven't turned your, you've turned your TV on four times, yeah. Uh, I've watched a bunch of YouTube on the tablet, like I was working and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Um, I've been watching like the behind the scenes Reacher stuff. Oh, Have okay. you checked any of that out? No. 
it's re- it's it was really interesting um just kind of breaking down the scenes and, and things like that and then um Alan Richmond's Richmond's whatever how you say his name was on um the inside of the inside, podcast. Yeah, I, I watched that. That and was good. His story about how he had to audition like twenty times yeah. for the role of Reacher, and uh, I was flabbergasted like Michael Rosenbaum when he was like, "Yeah, I'm two oh five. He was. It's like son of a bitch. Yeah, you're like six four, two oh five, looking yeah. like like that big. Yeah, like damn. Yeah, he's and, and then that he was like, yeah, I, I can just bulk up to to two thirty five, like nothing. I'm like, yeah. fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> so he in, in the time of the interview, he was two thirty five, like yeah. right, right, right. But, no, uh, but he dude said, is I think a piece. He, yeah, he's a piece. Yeah, so. I think he said he did that over eight months or something yeah. like that. Oh yeah, I know he didn't do it right. But away. Uh, um, but he said, I mean, that took a toll on him. Yeah, like just not just that, but just having to like all the just. You know, just all the stuff that he did in that going server. back for more. And yeah. yeah. So when, when it's, it's just like, honestly, when you're like, we're casting Jack Reacher, it's like, what about Alan? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, yeah. Um, he's such an interesting guy. I think people look at him and they just see Thad castle. Yeah. Um, which is a shame because he's so, he's actually very cerebral, very smart. Yeah. Well, listen, I, t- I like the stuff that he was talking about with his marriage and things like that. Mm hmm. Um, it was very honest and real and, and, and just interesting. And I had no idea he got blackmailed and you know, yeah, that, that was, was crazy. That's, that's terrifying. Yeah. So this is like part of like the whole me too thing and why mm-hmm. it's like, you know, who do you believe? And, you know, and, and I don't know, it's, it's just, well, the, so. then again, I, not to get into necessarily hit, no, we're I, not getting, but hit. just the idea of believe anybody without seeing the facts and evidence, it doesn't matter who it is necessarily. Like, and it doesn't matter like in the situation, uh, that there's, a, there's that slip, what they call a slippery slope and a tendency for people. And again, you, I can tell this to sports, right? Okay. This, like say your rival does this. Mm-hmm. The first thing you're going to do is usually laugh or say, that's right. what they get. Yeah. But if the same accusation comes for your team, well, we need to wait for, you know, stuff to come out. So, yeah. You know, be consistent with that. You should be consistent right. no matter who it is. Oh, yeah. Like, but whatever. a lot of people aren't. So, um, and then when it does come out, like, and there's been an investigation, like mm-hmm. Jussie Smollett, for example, there are people who still believe that dude. And I guess something else happened. I think he's going back into jail. Is he? They let him out after six days because he yeah. wouldn't eat. And it's like, okay. put a tube in his goddamn throat and make me. Mm-hmm. That's what you would do to a regular person. Yeah. But white privilege. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> didn't mean to get that political. Uh, oh, uh, I've been listening to uh, the Expanse books. Um, yeah, you, they put all the... Was it Memories together. Legion? Memories Legion, yeah. yeah. And it's been great. One, because they're all just in one book. Like, or one audio book. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of each book, Daniel and Ty give commentary about what that was what the story was so the the interesting one drive was actually for a completely different property really yeah and then they're like well hey wait we can make this like we can we can adjust this to 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 fit the expanse and let's put this out before we put out leviathan wakes and you know kind of test the waters so Hmm. that's interesting it was it was it's really cool i i'm i i thoroughly enjoy it um because normally when I work out, I listen to audiobooks. Um, and, and I've been listening to like, I listen to like the Jordan Peterson 12 Rules for Life. Mm-hmm. Um, I like listening to Jordan Peterson talk. I don't agree with everything he says. Well, that's. But like, I, I do appreciate the, the psychology background that he has. And the perspective that he comes across for things like manhood, especially dressing the way he dresses mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. with the, with the shorty pants. But, uh, it was good. And, and I really, I honestly, the thing I appreciated most was the last chapter about, um, his daughter, Michaela and mm-hmm. her uh, like, um, adolescent arthritis. Yeah. That was where, like, it's terrifying as a dad. It's like, how would I deal with that? And like, you know, I mean, 
it was it was just really like to me that was helpful. There was a couple of chapters that were kind of helpful for what I'm, I'm you know going mm-hmm. through divorce and everything. Um, but at the end of the day, the thing that resonates most with me from that book is um, being a good man is not being a weak man. Mm-hmm. And you know, I mean, like you and I are, you know, we're, we're trained somewhat, mm-hmm. you know, we know how to take care of ourselves. We know how to shoot. I do archery. I think you could probably do archery too. It's, really it's been a while, but I want to get back into that. Well, we'll go up anyway. <laughs> we'll go up to the range. <laughs> it's right there. Um, just right up the hill. Um, but it, you, you, you listen to him talk about like a good man is a dangerous man. Mm, yes. And, and it's like, you know, uh, there are days where I wake up and like, it's like, Oh, maybe I should choose violence today. And I was like, no, nah, I'm good. I don't, I don't need to choose violence. Um, but there are people who wake up and just choose violence who are just not good. They're evil. And, and mm-hmm. the violence they choose. And we're seeing so much of this, like in the news with like these Asian women getting attacked. And oh, I just like this. saw that latest one. Yeah. And then I, um, spot shared this thing with me of a, of a lady waiting at a bus stop. The guy casually takes his shoelace out of his shoe. Oh, that's yeah. So that was from a few. uh, And starts choking her out. Yeah. And uh, the guy who intervenes looks like he's trying to just hug the dude. Right. It's like, what are you doing? Choke his ass out. Yeah. And that's the thing. But on the other side of that, Mm -hmm. sorry, real quick, is that prank I sent you, where the guy like held the the tube up to the big dude's ear and like yelled, and then the dude turned around and like. Got him in the chokehold and made him cry. Did did you not watch that one? No, I didn't see that one. I sent it to you. Oh, did you? Okay. It's it's on Instagram. It's one of those prank videos. Like those guys who walk around the hardware store, like throwing sand up in the air and shit. Like, okay. Yeah. And like, he immediately starts crying. It's hilarious. (laughs) I'll have to check that out. But it's like, dude got got. So that's why you don't, that's what do they say? Fuck around and find out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I it just, I found, I found, I found that book interesting. Um, I'm reading Marcus Aurelius's, um, uh, meditations. Oh, I like to get back to I'm doing that. one chapter a week. Oh, that's a good idea. So I can try and like apply what he's saying. Um, the family stuff resonates with me just, uh, cause of my weird, like family, uh, trauma. And, uh, and yeah, so I've been, I've been doing that. Obviously I've been moving a lot. Um, I've been on the one wheel every single day. <laughs> so I, I, I live, so I'm still in, I'm still in Cincinnati and, um, I live right off of the little Miami bike path, uh, Loveland bike trail, whatever. And I have been doing at least eight miles on the one wheel, like every day. So, um, and then I got the bike all put together with the second battery and everything. And I found out one of the breweries, one of my friends from high school owns it down there and they're doing a food truck this summer. And I'm like, well, shit, I can make it from here to there in about 12 minutes on the bike, <laughs> like just all out. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm going to be like, I'm, I, I told him, I'm going like, to be here like two, three days a week for fish tacos then. So, <laughs> but I, you know, just kind of, I don't know. Uh, if anybody wants to buy some Star Wars toys, I'm going to be selling a whole bunch of those. So hit me up. Um, I've got a bunch of the original Black Series. Mm-hmm. They're still in the box. Um, I mean, most of what I have is still in the box because I'm an idiot. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just it's just one of those things where like TV has like been the least interesting thing in my life. Oh, I guess no. I turned it on another time because Haley and I played the uh, the N64. Yeah, yeah, I. I, it's funny. I am in that mode where I get sometimes get where I'll start watching something and I just kind of like lose the rhythm, you know, upload came out Friday. Last kingdom came out. Yeah. I tried to watch the first episode of upload. Mm -hmm. It's like 10 minutes too long. I just can't get through it. And, uh, so kingdom or last kingdom came out last week, two weeks ago, Vikings Valhalla came out last week and I've been in true Vikings form, I watched the first episode. That was and before I moved in. I 100% fell asleep. Yeah. And I'm in, I can't, I think I've watched, I think I'm halfway through Valhalla. I am half, almost halfway through, um, no, not even, I'm 
on episode three of Last Kingdom. Yeah, I'm on episode three of Upload, but I n- none of them get can, can get me in that rhythm where I want to watch two in a row. So yeah, it's w- with me. I've been more Horizon Forbidden West. I probably have like sixty hours in that game right now. I'm come. Up, I'm coming up on the end. I think I've been. Do- I haven't been doing as many side quests as usual. I've been trying to stick to the story. And then I'll get a side quest. And then I did get Gran Turismo 7, which is a damn good game. Yeah. I, how I much mean, was that? Like 70 bucks? I, I paid the 70 for that. Yeah, I might uh, have to get that one. That game is great. And it's it's funny because this is real life in the sense of, you know, you if you play arcade racers, you just you can get in any car and you're Can you drive an Xterra in Gran Turismo 7? I don't know. Dude, how awesome would that, that would be? be! Awesome. I did see a, a, they have a, that rap the Raptor in there. Uh, wait, the truck? Yeah. Oh, uh, but have you seen one of those in real life? Yes, they're I'm, amazing. Those are. Those are. I'm I love not, those. I'm not a truck guy necessarily, I, but like, yeah, I love those. And so when you get in a different car, and you know, especially after a car you've been driving for about ten races, and you get in a new one, because sometimes these challenges you have to do certain cars. And then you try to take that corner at the same speed and then you just completely spin out. It's like, oh yeah, this is a different car. Um, other than that, I did uh, watch, and I've been telling everybody, I, I told my uh, team on the, the meeting I had this morning, it's like, if you all are looking for something to watch, uh, I watched The Adam Project with yeah. uh, Ryan Reynolds. Um, and when was that? That was that came out last week on Netflix. It's basically what it's like: Flight of the Navigator meets Time Cop, yeah, meets Back to the Future. Yeah, that's oh, okay. It's it's you it's, might have to give me your Netflix password before they start charging the two ninety nine surcharge, yeah. so I can watch that. Yeah, it's so much fun. It's Ryan Reynolds being Ryan Reynolds. Oh well, yeah, I mean that's all which, he does. But Walker Scoble, who plays the young version of this character, yeah. Did they grow him out of a lab or something? Because he sounds exactly Does like he? Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> like just just his timing and everything on his lines. And there were some great lines in that movie. Like one of my favorites is like, don't you just want to hold him underwater till the bubbles stop? <laughs> <laughs> and there's a line where it's like children are the assassins of uh, happiness. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> uh, no argument, no lies detected. <laughs> but that um, movie was nice. was a lot of fun. And it's directed by Sean Levy, who, yeah. again, he I didn't realize he directed a few episodes of Stranger Things. Oh. I knew he yeah, directed Free that. Guy. Yeah. Uh, he also directed The Night at the Museum movie. Free Guy is not a horrible movie. I love Free Guy. It's it's actually a lot of fun. For I an open it, world fan, for it. an open yeah. world gaming right. fan, I loved it. Oh, uh, you saw the Batman. Yes. Which we're going to hold off on that because okay. I'm going to see it oh, at some are. point. Okay. Maybe. Well, it's and supposed to come on. Are you going to go to the movies or no. HBO Max? HBO okay. Max. Okay. But I saw Uncharted. <laughs> and I did not see Uncharted. Which I thoroughly enjoyed Uncharted. I th- did you see the Tomb Raider with uh, Alicia Vikander? I watched half of it and then it went off of HBO Max and then I never <laughs> you could never but, catch up I, with yeah, it. So because I, I find that I liked it. From what I saw yeah. of the previews of Uncharted, it's very similar in the sense of it's it it really uh, not necessarily sticks true to the game, but it has a lot of stuff from the game. It's a lot of fun. It's very flawed, but there, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of scenes taken directly out of the game, which is fun. Mm-hmm. Um, Tom Holland was far too young to be Nathan Drake. Um, yes. Even though he's 25 in real life, he, does th- yeah. he just looks like he's 12. Um, yeah. and then like the 12 year old version of him that was in it, it's like, or the, the 10 impossible. or whatever. Yeah. It's like, there's not much difference between the two of you. <laughs> you might be taller than Tom Holland. That's about it. <laughs> so, um, but no, uh, the chemistry between him and Mark Wahlberg is, is off the charts. Okay. Like I told it's you, uncharted. It, <laughs> pun intended. Maybe I'll be here all week. Uh, but it's like, I'm good every two and a half years for an uncharted movie for like the next 10 years. Mm-hmm. I'm fine with that. What's that guy looking at right out, out the window? Oh, that's my buddy, Tom Jones. Oh. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but yeah, so he's at the brewery. He was like, where do you live? That's, he was just oh, texting. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So that's the random cast. I think yeah. we're good. Yeah. Like we've, 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 we've sufficiently been random, yeah. randomized. Um, all right. Thank you all for being patient with me. One more thing. Oh, sorry. I will say to when you say it, randomized, yeah. randomizer, we've been watching tournament of champions on uh, food network every uh, Sunday. 
yeah, that's right. that's a thing now. I, cool. I, I'm, I love cooking shows. Yes. I didn't realize I did either. Cooking shows so. and tiny house shows are my jam. I'm so <laughs> excited. Tiny house to, shows? Uh, <laughs> I'm so yeah, so I can't wait for Discovery and HBO Max to merge. Oh, that's gonna be um, that's gonna be. It's gonna make it even more worth the money. Yeah. But on that note, thank you all for putting up with my nonsense. Thank you for putting up with my nonsense. You've been very patient, and I appreciate you more than like you ever know. Um, let's go eat. <laughs> all right, all right, later. See ya. <laughs>